how much does your violin cost? No, it's like it's like about the uh, price of like a Mercedes Benz like wow. SUV. <laughs> I have no reason to hate Justin, <gasps> and that that was just I forced that one. I know, um, but like, you know, you know, right? But you're trying I'm, to defend yourself right now, but you're mean, Junior. <laughs> Everyone knows the real Junior. The, the pill. Clappy claps. Welcome back to another episode of Off the Pill Podcast. Oh, that was scary. A little bit, a little bit scary, a little bit late. Uh, today we are joined by, with a very special guest, Mr. Jun Sung An. Yeah. Say it again. Say it. Say it. Jun Sung An. Jun Sung An. <laughs> We're here with Jun Curry On. That's his other name. And we also have David in the moderator seat. <laughs> yeah, we got we got Paco here right next to me. Oh, he's a joke. Boom. <laughs> the combo. Um, yeah, so we're with we're, we're with June today. Many of you may know him from uh, BGA. We just had Justin a couple episodes ago, a few episodes ago, uh, or you might know him as the violin player, or more recently as a real K-pop star, not a joke like BGA. <laughs> Let's talk about how you just released a new album, a real, a, like legit K-pop songs, right? Yeah. When, 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 how recent was that? Uh, it came out last week. Oh, well, well, actually, I don't know when this is coming out, but <laughs> or uh, it came out recently. Yeah, came you out had an album recently. that came out recently. Um, That's available uh, for streaming platforms and everything. Yeah, Spotify. Yeah. What's, the, what's the name of the album? So people uh, can it's called Limbo. So June Limbo. Okay. And the music video actually looks really, it looks legit. Like, where did you do that? Yeah, that was in Korea. So I went all the way you to Korea. You got real K-pop, like, cinematographers yeah, and stuff, because it looked much. legit. Yeah, they shoot a lot of, like, uh, JRP K-pop group stuff. I don't know if you How know. How come we don't twice. have them for our stuff? Oh, I mean, we can. We really? Can, for sure, yeah. That looked really good. Well, no, I mean, no Korea. offense. You did the other one, <laughs> it, and those look good. But I think part of it is because you had real dancers, right? Yeah. We're, uh, we're, we were holding you back. No, I think yeah. in Korea, the film crews just generally know how to shoot K-pop style. It's very K-pop. Whereas looking. out here, it's like they're not really used to how to shoot the dance to make it look more K-pop, I guess. Oh, that no. was you. You did that. <laughs> yeah, I tried. So I you tried. choreographed all of that and everything? Uh, no, no, no. The, the recent one, I had a choreographer do the dance. Like okay, so what, it, what did you do then for that music video? Uh, I think, so the whole album and the project, I kind of oversaw the whole project and like making the creative choices on like style, concept, all that. And then uh, the music video, I guess technically all I did was um, I coordinated getting, I was kind of like a producer for my own music video. Um, I didn't really direct it, but I still, I kind of co-directed it, I guess. And then I flew to Korea for just one weekend to shoot it and then came back. Does that happen very often where not necessarily a company will hire people to do it, but an individual will? Um, I don't think it happens that often because one, it involves like a ridiculous budget and two, like, I guess the artist is supposed to be focusing on being an artist mm -hmm. and not really handling all the little things that make a production a production. Um, but since I don't have a company, nothing, I just kind of did it all. Got it. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, for people who don't know, uh, June is also a YouTuber. Well, you started on YouTube before all this. Yeah. Um, and he, June has 1.4 million subscribers, 143 uh, million total views. But a lot of those views and stuff were even before you got into K-pop. It was a lot of it had to do with you. I mean, you're known as the violinist, right? You used to do violin covers of, of K-pop songs. Um but after when 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 did you get into this whole like was it before BGA or after BGA when you really started to I don't know basically <laughs> become a K-pop star? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I started off of YouTube just doing like pop songs like American Top 40s covers on the violin. Um, it was kind of an excuse for me to start uh, the kind of like keep playing the violin. Um, so I started that when I was a freshman in college. And then K-pop, I think I just started um, when somebody gave me a recommendation to cover a K-pop song and I was in a dance crew in college. So I kind of put those two together to do like violin K-pop dance covers. And um, I was already into that, I guess, before BGA. I think that's uh, partially the reason why uh, Phil, I think uh, Phil David reached mm -hmm. out to me to be part of BGA. And after BGA, I think. Um, yeah, because I didn't know you before that. No, I don't think so. I think that's when we first yeah. met. And, and, we're, and you're the only guy in the group that actually like looks like a k-pop person uh, I, I try, I try. <laughs> it speaks well too yeah speaks korean yeah I'm, I'm i'm full korean so you're the so you can hear when because apparently i didn't know but apparently david's korean isn't perfect 
So you can hear that he's not good at Korean. No, he's completely fluent. I'm oh, phenomenal. Are you? Yeah. Born in Korea. I thought you told me raised. that you're not like that great. Did you hear Tong like Sayade? That those lyrics? <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't, I don't catch up. Are you being sarcastic? <laughs> I wasn't born in Korea. I was born in America. I suck at Korean. Thank you very much. Being but even Arden has now. said your Korean isn't always great, right? No, it's not. Like we had to sometimes she will have to ask your friend when we're writing like lyrics and stuff like like oh, how do you say this? I asked June. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> David texts me randomly. He's yeah. like, yeah. Oh, how do you say this in Korean? <laughs> <laughs> okay. How do you say? See, I wouldn't have known. Walk. <laughs> I wouldn't I have known. It. Yeah. Like I mean, I can't tell. That's we were talking about this earlier um, when we were recording those songs because me and Phil we can't speak like any of it. It's just making sounds to us. Like I can't. I mean, I I, I couldn't have known that you aren't great at speaking korean i suck do you really though i i'm really bad i was not forced to speak korean with my parents growing up i wish they forced me but they tried at one point and i was like all right if they were like if you don't speak to us in korean we're not gonna respond to you and i was like all right fine i'm just not gonna talk to you then that's what <laughs> <laughs> it totally backfired on them. <laughs> oh wow yeah but what they did force you to do was play instruments right yes yes how'd you know that because you're a musician. Oh, yeah, true. Um, so, yeah, so I grew up playing violin and piano. Uh, I played a lot of, I, I played since I was five. Uh, violin, both instruments, actually, I hated so much. Piano and violin? Both. I hated both. I, had pr I hated practicing. What about you? Did yeah. you hate violin? Oh, uh, well, uh, there was a time when I really didn't want to practice in the beginning. At all. When did you beginning. start? Uh, Fifth grade. Fifth grade. Did you hate it in the beginning? Uh, in the beginning, it was kind of like, um. well, actually, in the beginning, I liked it. It was actually more out of spite because um my best friend played the violin and like you know like when you're young you have like play dates and stuff like that people come over and we play video games and whatnot he would always for some reason bring his violin mm -hmm. and kind of like the first ten minutes of our like hangout session is him showing me like him playing violin that's really weird <laughs> and, and, and not really weird but <laughs> that like, is strange kind of just like hey I practiced this today like I wanted to check show this you out. check this out and he would kind of like kind of show off I guess yeah, right flexing. so I was like I was like hmm. I'm kind of jealous. So I told my mom, I was like, hey, I want to play the violin. <laughs> That's how I started. Really? Um, I owed a lot, wow, a lot to him. Spite. Harrison, if you're watching. But, um, Harrison, <laughs> shout out to Harrison. Harrison. Show off, Harrison. <laughs> we know what you're like. We know what you you're like. You guys aren't even friends anymore. <laughs> but you're just like, hey, Harrison, look where I'm at. So you said it's fifth grade because you said you were born in Korea, yeah. right? South Korea and, and uh, not North. <laughs> like uh, you were born in South Korea. South. And uh, when did you come here? Or uh, where, 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 where did you grow up? Uh, in New Jersey. So okay, I, so he's is he still in Jersey? Uh, no, he's in SF right now. Yeah, we're he's like my first friend in America because okay. I didn't have friends because I couldn't speak English. So, oh really? Yeah. Wait, I, t well, what what grade? I guess. Uh, I moved when I was third grade, so I came in third grade. I was wow. I was great at math class. That was the only class that I was like, I went up to the board and I did all the math problems, and then every other class, words. every so other class was pretty rough for me. Yeah. Really? Did you get bullied? I didn't get bullied because I was in the ESL program. Like, oh. that's the foreign kids program. Um, so, I even if he did get bullied, he couldn't understand what <laughs> yeah, they're saying. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but you could get pushed and stuff. You <laughs> know? It's like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's crazy. You don't, I mean, like, I guess you grew up, uh, I guess, third grade. What, what, what age is that? Seven? Uh, like, nine, nine ish. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, that's still kind of surprising. You have no accent whatsoever. Oh, I'm, really? I mean, I don't hear it. I, do I hear a it's little a bit slight, of an accent. Slight, Wait, really? Slight. Just keep talking. Uh, I'll <laughs> keep <laughs> talking. <laughs> Maybe you'll figure it out. Quick, I don't so hear it. I got a question here about your instrument because, you know, that's your main weapon of choice, right? Mm -hmm. The violin. Uh, I'm wondering how much does your violin cost? Um, it's pretty... It's too personal, dude. No, it's like it's like about the uh, price of like a Mercedes Benz, like wow. SUV. I would say <laughs> what? that's that's a lot. You're not that's even joking. Lot. No, I'm not even joking. Wait, that's and like, do you you own it? Though? Yeah, I own it. I have insurance on it. It's like, it's I, f I forgot what it's called. Like when you get How something really you? expensive, like jewelry, you write something. Yeah, yeah. So like, you, oh, you get it appraised, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So my violin's appraised and stuff like that. Because I, I could be wrong, but there there are actually violins out there that are very expensive and. Yep. Are rented out to people, right? Yeah, yeah. I think um, there's violins that can range up to like a couple million and stuff. Like that, that is stupid. Yeah, it's crazy for a piece yeah. of wood. No, I mean like, okay. Would you be if you if I were to have a million dollar violin, someone well not me like someone who can play it a million dollar violin, <laughs> and 
a Mercedes Benz, violet, which is what, 50 grand? Oh, how much? I don't want to. Like, how much is a. I would say like around 50 grand. 50 yeah. grand violin wow. and a. Uh, what's a what's a cheap violin, but not like it's like crap. 100, 100, 100 buck violin, two hundred dollars. Yeah. If we all, if they all were to play the same thing, you would be able to tell which is which. Um, actually, it might be kind of hard to tell the difference between the Mercedes Benz and the the million couple dollar million one. dollar one. But definitely, like the cheap cheap ones, like the factory made ones, are like oh, the right. ones that are like in like music shops. Like for example, like an instrument you get at like Sam Ash, for example, or something like that, is not probably not. That one I can tell the difference between that and like my violin or like a couple million dollar violin or something. Hmm. Did you did you have to? Is it like a payment thing or like how does that usually work? Like do you have to go into a back alley or do you go into? A, <laughs> yeah, like you a, have to bring like a suitcase and everything. Dang, and then it's pretty. It's that's, pretty shady. Dang. No, <laughs> it's hard to tell when you're being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it like <laughs> does not change. There's no one. Because <laughs> it's his second language. Okay, <laughs> I'm bullying him right now. <laughs> if he doesn't know hear, this. I don't hear any accent still. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so um, what is the have, has anyone ever? It's a Stradivarius. Yeah, have you? Uh, has what? anyone ever let you play it? And stuff? Um, I've only touched the Stradivarius once. What, and are that you, was, what is this word? What is that? It's the name of the person who made the violin. Oh, so you haven't touched him or Hun her? No, no, no. <laughs> the violin that he made, I touched hundreds of years oh. ago. Right, it was yeah. made a couple hundred years ago. I think there's only two hundred Strads. In the whole world. Are we talking about the Mercedes Benz? No, this is this is the the million dollar one. Yeah, oh, okay, million. okay, got it. Yeah. These are the ones that are in museums and stuff. How like can that. you even play them? Like, what if you dropped it? Like, oh, then the one that you have. Oh, mine. Yeah, that's yeah. like fifty grand. Like, what if there's really a chip? Sad. Do you lose like twenty? That's twenty grand already. <laughs> like. You know, you it's like when it, you like you crash your car. Yeah, you fix it. So like, uh, I think David can speak from experience, but like, um, people fix it. It's like piece of wood and then it's still worth the same like my violin for example it's like almost like 300 years old mine and then um there's like a section on the bottom of the violin it's completely shattered and re-glued so it's been that's through pretty older than america <laughs> is it <laughs> yeah I'm not, I'm not good with history i i I, mean, I don't know when america was founded but 1776 so uh, i mean like mm. okay uh, i'm sorry <laughs> this is just like that's blowing like my mind stuff. like so if it, if it was really made 300 years ago, and you're saying there's a bunch of these, right, even older than that, mm -hmm. that are worth more, it's kind of like wine. It get, it's worth more as time goes on. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know the previous owners? Like, how did you how did it get into your hands? Uh, I actually don't know the previous owners, but it was made in Germany, uh, for okay. example. And uh, I mean, not for example. It was made in Germany. Um, I got it from my violin uh, person in New York. He does a lot of, like, professional violinists, like... Um, uh, probably don't know, but like Midori, Gautam, like these people are um. Midori is green in Japanese. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, isn't that, that a? It's uh, a lot of names for anime. Sorry, I didn't mean oh. to interrupt. Oh no, no, that's that's, that's cool. But then um, the he he has a lot of those like really expensive violins and like cheaper ones. I don't know where he got it from, but I got it from him in New York. Yeah. Okay. You know, I just thought would be. Did you pay for it? Sorry. Well, my parents did. Yeah. Damn. My grandpa, uh, my grandpa, grandma helped out a lot, and uh -huh. my parents too like an investment it's kind yeah, of it's a, a so if it, i mean if you keep it like now i'm thinking about it like it's like gold right you just keep yeah. investing in violet you should just get a bunch of violins Actually, hold on to it and that's sell bitcoin it. that's old it school bitcoin it wasn't a mercedes-benz uh, suv cost when i got it oh what was it, it? got up the price is that because up. of inflation uh, <laughs> that's probably partially that too uh -huh. but then another thing is um violins like the more you play it the more the sound develops as in the sound that my violin made really? when I first got it, and now it's completely different. Wow, that's the opposite of a car. Yeah, it gets when you drive it, the worse it is. Yep. Oh, so you, damn, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. So you could just have like a farm, right? A violinist <laughs> buy a bunch and just have them play all day, and it, and you're making money. Yeah. Yeah. So it's actually, actually yes. right. Yes. So it's, it's appreciated. That's yeah. cool. But like, I mean, like, how did how do you, if you're reselling it, like, how can you prove like, okay, this was played for like. A thousand hours since mm -hmm. I got it, so it's worth that much more. Um, I think it really depends on like the professional's opinion. Like I'm yeah. not in that right, world, right. so like I can't really decide what it costs is. But I bring it back to the guy. He fixes it up for like a week, comes back, and he's like, "Oh, this is like probably like where." So it's they, at they now. but they realize, like, oh, you played this so X amount, but like they can hear it. Or like they how test they? the sound and stuff, oh, like yeah. see how much the and sound resonates like, more and stuff like that. They can they have methods of like yeah, touching it's, that. it's a combination of like. The sound, it's the combination of looking through the, sometimes like the person who made it will put like a, 
uh, signature inside the violin too, and you can kind of authenticate that. Yeah, but how do you know how much it's been played? Is what I'm saying. You can't really tell that, but you can kind of like measure, look at the wood, and there's a lot of different factors that are n- involved with that. So I, I think it's because uh, my parents own a music store, and my mom is a restores. She does that. She does that for a living. You should take yeah. your thing to him and then see how much more since you've been playing it. Actually, what you should do is just. Start the farm, man. Like, start the file. This is a good business. No, no, you, know, <laughs> like, you, no you actually bring up a good point because actually some of the more expensive uh, instruments that my, my mom has, she actually has people play it. She, she'll let to people borrow it. To make it worth it. more. Yeah, because it That's opens up the sound crazy, even more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like a violin sitting in a museum, like, for think, several years will sound pretty bad. I don't think the average person knows. Like, I didn't know anything. I didn't know violins cost that much, for one. Um, now I'm starting to think every violin I've ever seen, how much was that really worth? Like Lindsay Sterling, mm-hmm. like her, her violins can't be worth that much, right? I think when it's when you put electric, when you, it's an electric yeah. violin, which is what she usually plays, uh, those it's worth less. Worth less, yeah. Because oh. that it doesn't really depend on the wood and stuff. It's more technology yeah. that makes the sound. Got it. So yeah. So you're almost like a K-pop Lindsay Sterling in a way. Yeah. I dance, I play violin, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I guess to transition uh, into that, because we originally did talk about K-pop, I, I kind of want to know and, and touch up on, uh, I guess, your, your history and your past um, and how you kind of got into K-pop and how you're, like, trying to integrate it into your YouTube channel and did you even audition for, like... <laughs> did you even audition for, like, uh, you know, actual K-pop groups? Yeah, uh, I... I auditioned once in college and then once I got, um, I guess, uh, notified from some company, uh, when I moved out to LA right after college, but, um, K-pop was just always something I listened to cause my sister's really big K-pop fan. She still is. And, um, wow, yeah. no shout out to her, but Harrison gets one. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, so no, <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> hi, hi Dorothy. Thank you. But, um, what you call it? Uh, K-pop, I just got into because somebody recommended me like playing playing a K-pop song, and I danced in college, so kind of combined the two, and um, I made a cover. People liked it, and then I started listening to K-pop. I started enjoying. It. Dude, really, there's ghosts here. Well, Something that happening. one fell. Like, let's. I tried to just move on, but then that one fell too. Dude, can we wow. cut real quick? <laughs> For real, let's cut real quick. There's cut. ghosts in here, man. <laughs> the hat. What is happening? Should I put it back up? Yes. Yeah, but that's... Yeah, maybe we should show up. This is scary, man. <laughs> Haunted edition. Maybe the... Dude, we're all a little freaked out. <laughs> that was really weird. It could be a coincidence. It's never happened before in my house. Dude, this is... So, dude... Did we ever announce that this is at your house, this podcast? This podcast is in, this LA podcast is at David's house. And um, there's there's ghosts here. Now we know. <laughs> um, <laughs> David, you have to live here. Anyway, if more weird things happen, I mean, we're going through the footage. When you go through the footage. <laughs> if you see any orbs. I know. Dude, that was freaking tries. crazy. <laughs> I didn't even know that first thing fell, to be honest. Uh, for, for our listeners, um, there was two loud bangs you heard. Uh, actually, you might have heard some voices because it's being recorded. I don't know. Oh, uh, b- a couple of our, our painting things fell, like, right back to back, and they didn't fall all day. So, like, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's really weird. weird. <clears throat> anyway, getting back on topic. What were we talking about? So, yeah, do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, that's a good point. Do you believe in ghosts? Because uh, you you said just now you were like, "Oh man, I got like goosebumps." No, I got I got a lot of goosebumps. Um, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to believe in ghosts. I think it's a mentality <laughs> thing where if you don't believe it and you're strong, but you do. If you're strong, <laughs> then the ghost won't haunt you. Is Are what you I've been strong? told. <laughs> no, let's not. let's, go, let's convince June so that so that it happens. <laughs> so it's really interesting to me because there's there, I've heard a lot of stories um, about the K-pop industry, especially as of late. Right, there are some articles going around like about how little they get paid actually for how much they're bringing in. Um, I don't know what's true. I've heard some stories, but since you've been kind of in that world not that you're you you went down that industry route um are those are, is there truth to those rumors about like how 
poorly they're treated like or i mean david knows too you know a lot of people in that industry yeah i've heard i've definitely heard some stories yeah yeah, yeah. i think i uh, i think something important to note is that um we only know of like smyg jyp like a lot of these big big hit now with bts right <laughs> we know these big groups big mm-hmm. companies but there's like hundreds of entertainment companies out in korea and there's like thousands and thousands of kids that are trainees that may never even get to debut even if they like they might be a trainee for 10 years and they might not get chosen to debut so there's so many people in that industry that it's kind of like hard to say like this one example like is the same for all of it but i think there is a lot of truth in um those stories don't just exist for no reason i feel like mm-hmm. but i don't know that's like that's something i never really like have like a strong opinion on well, I only know because I, I mean, we know some people in that industry and I've heard stories, not to say that I know it's true or not, but since you guys are more, I mean, you know more than I do. Um, I mean, I've heard things where like they force, you know, the trainees or whatever to essentially like they, they force them to get like plastic surgery sometimes and they force them to, to even like do sexual things with people, like kind of whore them out. Yeah. Um, but so you know that that so it is true. Then. It's true. So I, you know from personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, I I know someone. Wait, what? Man, should I even say this story? <laughs> Don't I, say names. I Don't won't say, say names, names, but I will say that I know someone who was um, spilled in that tea. industry. I'm trying to be very careful. Be careful. Uh, this person offered services quote-unquote services to somebody I know who is wealthy uh, for basically hinting at, if you pay me, I will do, I will sleep with you. And, and they're in the K- and they're a K-pop this person, idol. Yes. And yeah. you know them personally. And they told you this? No. The, the rich person the told The rich you. person told me this. I So it is true then, because yeah. I've heard that, and I'm not, I didn't hear it from David. I've heard it from someone completely unrelated so it is it's true that yeah. stuff happens and yeah. i also heard that not only do they do that they do it for a reason because if you ever go against the label what the label does is they bas- basically use it as as uh, blackmail so if you ever go against them they'll release that information and they'll have some kind of like sex tape or some kind of scandal to cu- basically just ruin your reputation in korea yeah right because it's in, way worse there yeah in korea if you have a sex tape your your career is over, right? Whereas in America, it's just it's just begun. It's just begun. <laughs> <laughs> so, June, any uh, yeah? What do you do? <laughs> we got to blackmail June <laughs> before he becomes the big star. Um, so our, I mean, like, I guess since you kind of almost got into that world, I'm kind of curious actually because there is there there are a lot of benefits to going down that route. Mm-hmm. Right, like you, you get instant exposure. Well, not I guess, like you said, it's not for everyone. Yeah, but, but I like think I think if you debut, so again, it's like if you're a trainee, um, it doesn't you don't really get the benefits except like the resources. But once you debut, I think, like in the big three, like SMJIP, YG, I think definitely um you get that instant exposure, literally overnight fame. Uh-huh. Like if you if JIP posts a teaser for a new group, they're instantly famous overnight, kind of thing. Um, and they do a lot of press marketing as well as, again, like financially, they help with all the resources, training, uh, music video budget, all that kind of stuff. Like you've seen like the K-pop music videos that are like mm. pretty insane uh, scale wise. So I think there's a lot of benefits in that end, but also a lot of downsides, as you mentioned. Right. And um, doing it independently, I think it's a lot more fun, in my opinion, because I get to control everything. Mm. And I think that's more important to me than, I guess, like being famous like that quickly or easily right. I guess yeah right so for all those young kids out there who look at k-pop stars and aspire to be like them how do you become a k-pop star um i don't be korean be, be or korean. asian actually no, no they're, they're, no, no, they're no, no. expanding yeah there's they, like thai they, yeah, there's a lot of like um like uh half korean people yeah. there's a lot of chinese a lot of of thai and yeah, it's it's not it's not limited to being Korean. I think I think it's if you have what it takes, like talent wise, as well as you have the passion. I think the most important thing is the passion to do it, because it's not just about you being good at something. You have to like looking like a K-pop idol, right? Because there's that like image that a K-pop idol has when you're on stage. You have to either look really pretty, really cute, really like cool or like sexy or whatever it is. Um, you kind of have to like fit in that world. You have to have what it takes, and I think that's the thing that makes somebody a K-pop. 
idol or artist more so than the music or the talent because that mm. like you just change the k-pop song to english it becomes american pop it's not right i don't think i never thought k-pop was a genre k-pop mm-hmm. is like a whole package thing. just pop in korean yeah and yeah. you just have to have that image the dancing the yep. production all that package that's there's, what makes it k-pop there's actually a lot of controversy about that too right isn't there like a what, what is that the award show is announcing a k-pop category and bts fans are really upset because they're they feel like they're putting they created that category just so that they're not competing against mm-hmm. other pop artists and because bts is huge right now so uh i forget I'm, i can't even remember what award it's something big i don't know if it's like grammys or mm-hmm. yeah, can we look it up real quick like yeah, i know there there is uh there was a lot of controversy Re- very recently they announced it and there was a bunch of like uh bts people who are really upset and it, and it is that's i i i mean i get it but it's kind of like, why wouldn't they be allowed in the pop category? Yeah. You know, it's still pop and there is English in it. Like, <laughs> I don't know. So it's, it was the MTA v, MTV VMA Awards. Oh, that's nothing. Then. Created a K-pop <laughs> category. <laughs> what are they getting mad over? Who cares? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'll, never be, I'll never be invited. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you're done. But, but, but speaking about being canceled, right? And stuff mm. like that. Like, don't you think like if you ever were to make it, like the goal is to make it big, right? Like mm-hmm. if you ever were to make it big, don't you think, aren't you worried that these, like, we we just talked about how dark and dirty these labels play. Aren't you worried that, that you're, like, going against the grain and you're, like, setting an example for people? Mm-hmm. Like, they, you, you must, I mean, you you will be on their target list. Like, they don't want people to, to create themselves on their own. Mm-hmm. They want you to be like, hey, we need this label to make it. Aren't you afraid at some point they're going to target you? Um, or maybe, have they reached out to you already to try and get you under them? Mm, no, I mean I I do get like uh like some I guess like no name entertainment labels sometimes reach out to me here and there, but um uh, I I don't think I'm like a target one because like I think I'm still starting and I'm still kind of discovering myself in this music career side of things. Um, but I think the beauty is that my YouTube channel has me for like the past eight nine years, mm-hmm. and you can see the full history of me, right? And I think that's something that's very nice to have, like almost like a portfolio for myself. And I think people looking to be in the K-pop industry, like there's one part that they have to think about, what do they have to lose? For me, a big choice of not joining a label was because I had too much to lose because I had that whole like, I guess like um, portfolio of me being a YouTube uh, violinist um, that if I did sign to a label, for example, they probably like make me get rid of my YouTube channel, make me get rid of my Instagram, anything. So like oh, wow. I have a fresh new plate. That's how they, that's how they like their idols, no na- like, right? right? So right, they can right. write everything for them. And they kind of think this, uh, that's one thing I think is a little bit different because in like the American industry, for example, like they won't do that. Like the artist has full control. Right. And I think that's always how it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, but in but K-pop, I think it's just completely different. The culture is different mm-hmm. and what they're looking for in K-pop idols and how that markets, how that sells. It's completely different from like Justin Bieber, for example. It's a totally different image. So I think it, it works for that end. Um, but for me, I don't think I need to like necessarily keep myself tied to K-pop mm-hmm. necessarily because um, it just made sense for my demographic to do K-pop right now. Um, but I would consider myself more of a Korean American artist rather than a K-pop artist. Yeah. Interesting. Because it kind of sounds like uh, the packaging for Korea uh, is really about inorganic. You know, like it, everything is, almost, it's almost like plastic surgery, which is something that's widely accepted there. Like they wanted everything to look clean, cut well-produced where uh in the, the a more western westernized uh entertainment is kind of just like be edgy be original make your own stuff uh but still have like hints of formula there yeah yeah for sure yeah so uh what are you looking since you said like you know this is what you want to do for now uh what is your your next goals because uh, after uh i guess this k-pop phase is over for you or mm-hmm. whatever well, this mini album was like kind of um, me uh, just really trying to get, in, get it out of my system. Like I have a physical CD, I have a music video, I have a lot of like I, I featured an actual K-pop idol mm-hmm. in one of these songs. And then um, so it's just something that I really wanted to get out of my system because I never was able to do it. And finally I got to do it. So if, honestly, right now I'm kind of just like, I don't know what I mm-hmm. really want to do. I kind of want to see where this album goes yeah. as well as work on music that's not maybe not in Korean. I'm um, just like. And I want to kind of bring the violin back because I think I kind of pushed that away on purpose because I wanted to like really focus on like original, like singing, rapping, that kind of stuff. But I want to bring the violin back 
and see how I can I can incorporate that in my future content. So, so yeah. you'd be open to continuing this if this blows up for you and does like really well. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it necessarily needs to blow up, but I think I want to follow it because it's still a passion for me. Like music is still a big passion, um, but maybe kind of seeing where that might lead me with like my film side of stuff too. Yeah, soundtrack stuff maybe. I don't know. Is is the YouTube enough to kind of sustain a career for you? Um, I would say I took a really big hiatus, like two years, uh, no violin playing, uh, no violin covers and like content on YouTube for a while. And like YouTube is kind of, it's very important that, you know, like you have that consistency on YouTube to maintain that number. Um, so all the fans watching my content right now on my channel are, were originally there for the violin content, not for the K-pop okay. content. So I would say I'm, I've rebranded my YouTube. It's almost like starting a new YouTube channel. So, um, Right now, not not. I don't think so, but um, I think uh, hopefully, eventually. Yeah, because yeah. it's because it, I know there's a lot of musicians out there that you know it's it's difficult to do music full time. Right. Um. You know, you're luck. You're one of the lucky ones if you're able to. So you know, when it comes to making money, uh, I know YouTube pays a, a percentage of ad revenue, and then you know, do you, do you sell merch? Do you have a Patreon? Do you do you do live shows? Like, is that kind of where you make money as well or brand deals? Yeah. I think uh, right now shows, uh, shows were the biggest, like last year, for example, I did a lot of like university shows with like my violin content. And then um, moving forward, I think I have like a physical album CD that came out. That one was actually mo mostly, again, kind of getting it out of my system. Like I can say I have like a legit K-pop album. It was like little photo cards and stuff like that. So that's one merch, uh, possibly mm -hmm. like a uh, more like t-shirt merch. Merch I think is always an option. Uh, moving forward but um for now it's still more of a passion project i would say so, so for fans who want to support you what are the top two revenue generators for you where they can support and help you you know get to a full-time position mm, i would have to say just stream it like 10 million 30 million <laughs> just times. keep streaming Stream, hit that yeah. refresh button like or one, you could start the violin farm or the violin farm yeah i'm telling you man that's a good business it sounds like I'm telling you I don't know what the numbers are actually, but it sounds like it could be a good business. It's a good return. It just yeah. takes a long time. Sounds like it could be a good business. Mmm. Mmm. Don't give sounds. him. Don't, don't sounds give him like it don't could give be. Don't give him courtesy laughs. Sounds like it could be oh a my good gosh. business. Speaking on this mm. horrible transition, <laughs> um, let's go into some some questions we got from Twitter. Yeah, that Ooh. sounds good. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading like. Uh, these are, these are some good ones. We got some good ones. <laughs> I mean, speaking about like K-pop and BGA, um, Splendid, you'll ask, do you hate Justin? Do, do we talk Justin? about how, do we just, do we talk about that? About no, how no. like the last podcast, Justin was, uh, we were talking, talking hell of shit about you. Oh <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, did you get to, did you get to listen to that? Well, um, I got, I got notified by some, uh, fans <laughs> that, Hey, Justin <laughs> says some mean things about you. Your fandom, your yeah, fandom. my fans are mm -hmm. like, and then somebody took it actually really seriously. Did they, somebody actually got hurt. Oh really? They're like, they're like, I can't believe they talked about you. Like that. And I was like, no, it's a joke. I'm pretty sure it was a joke. So I went, I watched it. I watched it to the point when Paco said like, there's no way June will make it. To this point in the podcast just to show you up yeah. and he's like well i can leave now <laughs> but yeah I, mean, I was there and i was uh, yeah just made fun of my youtube username jun korean yep he said it was he the didn't stupidest know thing but, he ever heard. but he didn't know that it it was <laughs> it curry on was korean korean yeah actually i'm pretty sure a lot of people are wondering that's like the most i actually did at, i didn't realize till later on whenever like you know how you do q and a's here and there sometimes yep. right like that's the number one question i get like Every single time, no matter how many times I explain it, mm -hmm. it's like an AIM screen name back when AIM used to be a thing mm -hmm. that carried over to my Google Gmail account that carried over to my YouTube account. And then that's June just, that Curry. Just on. So now we know where to email you basically. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> Curry on at gmail.com. Yeah. Make sure you guys spam it. I'm but, just kidding. I'm just but kidding. do you hate Justin? You, uh, n No, I don't. I, I have no reason to hate Justin. Maybe after the podcast episode, maybe <laughs> for calling me out like that. But, See, but um, I already said that, like, we were like, oh, we're going to get June to, like, talk shit about Justin. I was like, I don't think June would do that, even even if it was real. <laughs> yeah, let's just hear, what would be your best yeah, Justin let's, insult? Let's hear your, yeah, let's hear My your, your comeback. Your yeah. comeback. Now that Justin. you're in front of the mic. You're like, Justin's right here, yep. and I'm Justin, and I just said, F you, June. 
Well, you look like a catfish. Oh, oh. oh. damn! He That's... said a catfish. You what? know what? <laughs> 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 oh my god! You're way meaner than That's... him. You're way meaner than wow. Justin. <laughs> We need a is comparison, it, it, a side by side picture. Is it picture. because of his his whiskers right now? Or? Well, I mean, he grew, he grew out a beard. I saw, <laughs> and then I was watching the podcast. But then I was Damn. just thinking it on the back was, of my mind. Not in a so, bad way. No, it was Not so PG, way. but it was such a diss. That's a diss. That's <laughs> a major like a, diss. He looked like a catfish. He said so calmly. <laughs> no, it's like, like he was waiting to say this, yeah. <laughs> and it comes from a real place because it was yeah. in the back of his head. And he's yeah, like, I but, hold this back. To be honest, though, like, like I have no reason to hate Justin. <laughs> and that that was just I forced that one. I know, um, but like we know, you know, right? But you're then, trying um, to defend yourself right now. But you're mean, Junior. <laughs> Everyone knows the real you're the June. True bully, Yo, dude. But to to be fair, Justin was pretty mean to you as well. On no, the but podcast. that's like I mean that. So that became a thing on the first shoot. I think mm-hmm. after a little bit, it naturally progressed, and then the second one, I started writing it in. Because it just naturally progressed that it's, way. It was but like it's the a real oldest and the young. Well, is he the oldest? Yeah. Yes. The oldest and the youngest, and it's like a natural. Like it's funny. Like the relationship works. But it's really like that in real life too. Yeah. It's a, that's it's a carried thing. on. It's yeah. not. It's not a. It's not an on screen thing. It's just naturally like that. Yeah. He'll, he'll he'll do it even if the cameras are off right now. Honestly, yeah. I could <laughs> hear Justin's voice in my head as soon as he said catfish. It, like that high pitch voice. <laughs> I don't. I don't think he sounds like that. <laughs> Why is not like that? I don't have a very good impersonation. In pers- but you know what I'm saying. Oh, that's funny. He uh, did say that he w- he would make love to you. And really? I, I I don't know if you believe that he would, but um, it was in he, a sarcastic. He did tone, say though. that. He did say that. I mean, he he we he said he would grab you by the hair. <laughs> we don't have. We're not trying to get demonetized here. Yeah. Um, but he he'll say things like that. Yeah, and he won't say just kidding. Mm. Even though we in. know, okay. just so you know, it's a love hate relationship. It's yeah. a love hate relationship. Um, but anyway, so we have a few more. I, I want to know this, but I don't know. I don't know where this one came, came from. Have you ever had any rude encounters from famous K-pop idols? Rude encounters, mm. or maybe wholesome encounters. As well. I want to hear the rude encounters. ones. Though. Yeah, give me the rude ones. Because I'm ones? sure you've come across a bunch since you go to KCON and you do all those like. You know, you're kind of in that industry now. Tea yeah. sipping assholes. Yeah, yeah. Um, at KCON, I do this thing. Uh, I do a lot of things where um, I MC because I'm bilingual. Um, so they have these things called fan engagements where they come on stage, they answer like Twitter questions like this, like kind of like this setting, like an interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I take the questions, I ask them in Korean, I translate it for the audience and stuff like that. Um, I won't say a group's name because I don't want to like cause K-pop. Yeah, items, don't say names. You know, like, yeah, actually, you can, you, you could. That's terrifying. <laughs> I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight people. But then um, uh, there was this one specific member of this girl group um, that was just completely different on stage and how she was off stage. Like the second she got off stage, she like called for her manager, go like, where's my water? Where's my water? And like so a diva. Like not not just a diva though, like a diva, but super like, like a really bitchy diva. <laughs> wow. Like to the point where like on stage, she was all like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like stuff like that, really yeah, happy so and stuff fake. like that. The second she came down, her smile just disappeared. Her face just completely changed. Right. So I I don't think it was rude to me. I think people dealing with her on her team right. would feel that she's very rude all the time. But maybe she was having like, a bad day or something, but that's the bad one. What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> or what does it rhyme with? Mm. Oh, Slack man. drink. The the K pop fans will know. Isn't that the girl group? Black yeah. Pinks? Oh. No, I did not say that. No, no, but that's like one of the biggest girl groups, right? <laughs> that is, yeah. yeah. One of the one of the it biggest. Was right it, it was them. It was them. We're just gonna start Pink. it. One of the but figure out which one. Wait, June Black. said it was them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Okay. So I mean, well, that that kind of goes back to what we were talking about, though. Like, it's very artificial, right? Not not Sometimes. saying everybody is like that, but to a certain degree, like they have to be like the cutesy personality, you yeah, know, yeah, on yeah. stage. If not, it's that's there's a reason why they're all they act very similar, yeah. right? And it's it's kind I of. I mean, like you understand a, that, right? Yeah, following like a formula and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. I have, like for example, for me, like I have to say nice things about Justin. To have that facade of me being the nice member of the BGA group, oh, but, yeah, exactly. But true, true. behind truth the scenes, is coming out Woo. behind the scenes, behind the scenes, you're just making out. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, I guess, uh, kind of going off of that, what is the weirdest fan encounter you've had that I've had mm-hmm. personally? Um, 
Because, I mean, this is a question we usually ask, uh, like, the girls. Because mm-hmm. usually their stories are pretty wild. It's always stalkers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But have you had any mm-hmm. weird ones? I'm sure. Mm, I think it was... I forget if it was at a K-Con or some... No, it was at one of the K-Cons. Uh, most of my experiences come from K-Con because that's when all the K-pop fans come. Uh, there was one fan that literally followed me everywhere, knew which hotel I was in. Oh, so that like, is a stalker story. Mm. Yeah, but th- this one was weird because um, like I don't know how she knew, but then like the next like one like I saw her at the hotel in the lobby and she made eye contact and I like you know like when you see a person then they recognize you and like and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, it's a fan and stuff like that. We took a picture. She asked for a picture and then. And then the next morning I woke up, I was getting ready to go to the convention. I walked out of my room and she was in the hallway. Oh. And then she was just sitting in the corner of the hallway. She saw me, she's like, oh, I'm sorry. And she's like, said a bunch of stuff. But I was honestly like really creeped out to say anything or like comprehend what was happening. But then that happened two days, three days in a row. Three Damn. days in a row. She was in the That's hotel a little scary. And stuff like that. So that was a slightly creepy. But the third but day she's just sitting outside your door. Oh, that would be so. She uh, gets to get messed cl- up. She just. The reason why these things yeah. fell, <laughs> she was here the whole time, dude. That's this okay. Place. Well, then, they, yeah, that's like a stalker story. Mm. Yeah. It seems like um, we have one more question, and it says, "Well, that's kind of we kind of answered that already." Tell us about. Well, let's not do BGA stuff. The other question, June. Do you remember when I met you in the lobby in your hotel <laughs> <The> hallway? <yeah. laughs> well, I that mean, you know, we pretty much answered. We answered these oh, questions no, already. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to go back to that. I got one. Go ahead. That your fans might want to know about, unless they already know. Mm-hmm. Are you single? Am I single? No, I'm not. Oh, play the same. Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been in, in a, your relationship, uh, or is that private information? No, it's been a little over three years now. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Actually, like a month after three years. It's just yeah. girl we know, right? Yeah, Caroline. Yeah, we met. Yeah. 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 She was on the BJ shoot. Yeah. She was actually our stylist. Yeah. Who's it gonna yeah, be? And, and she was uh, in s- some of your videos, right? Yeah, she sings. Mm-hmm. Oh, she yeah. Sings really well. Wow. Do you guys plan on collaborating more? Or mm, yeah, maybe. Like honestly, like now that I'm kind of getting into the singing, rapping stuff like that, it would be really nice to have a song together. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be really nice. But um, she's, she's really, fluent too, right? Yeah, she's fluent in Korean. Mm-hmm. How does she feel about all of the success that you're experiencing right now? Well, uh, she's kind of like my reality check always, as in like she'll humble you, humble me. Maybe a little too much. In what ways, though? <laughs> like what? It, what? Like wh- I can't imagine you being cocky or. I mean, yeah, that like generally I don't. But like for example, like when you're in a relationship or like with family or something, you kind of want that like, like them to kind of like credit you or just mm-hmm. like praise you a little bit. You know, like it's right. kind of like that child in me that I want like my girlfriend to watch my video and be like, oh my god, you look so good in it and stuff mm-hmm. like that. For example, like she'd compliment, but at the same time humble me. At the same time, she'd look <laughs> at my uh, most recent music video. For example, she would watch it and she'd be like. Who is that guy? He's so good looking, but that's not you, <laughs> and stuff like that. So it's, it's, like, it's like a compliment, but a not really. Yeah. You. You a backhanded backhand compliment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she is complimenting. She is appreciating, but at the same time, she knows to like make sure it doesn't get to my head and stuff. Like Got it. That. Got it. Do you think it makes uh, some of your fans jealous that you have a, you're taken? You think or? Um, yeah, I think init- Like we've been public for a while. Um, but, um, I, I guess some people still don't know, even though I post pictures with her all the time and stuff like that. But, um, uh, there are instances when people do get jealous and are really mean to her mm. on her Instagram. For example, people will, like make fake accounts to like be really mean on her Instagram. Well, isn't it normally like the K-pop, like people, bands, like people, they don't have relationships, right? No, that's well, like it, a big, like if you yeah, have a girlfriend, not, boyfriend, then your career right. is over. Pretty and much. isn't there a thing too? Like, I don't know. Cause I, I just read BJA comments. <laughs> isn't it a thing? Like there, there's usually a, gu- a couple guys that like you and Justin who do have some kind of bromance thing going on yeah. in the group. There's always one, right? Yeah. Yeah. How many, how many, not that, I don't know that you would know how many of those actual like bands, do you think? how many, how many gay people are in the K-pop industry? Do you think? Uh, personally, I think there's, Plenty. Really? Like, there's a lot. But I, it's not I, accepted I really in Korea, think. right? It's not accepted in Korea. It's accepted like out here. Like people like K pop fans prefer that. Yeah, for example, it seems like it. Because <laughs> they would rather have two members dating mm-hmm. each other than them dating different girls. And right. Because like they that. don't want to like ruin the facade. Yeah, they want that fantasy of being able to be with them at one point. But if I'm not able to get you, then I'd rather have right. David be with you, for example. You know, and that's that's kind of <laughs> I just had an image in my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, people, trust me, have images of you and Justin, so. Oh, I have. I, I definitely have. 
<laughs> the next one, the next skit we're gonna write is just like softcore porn. <laughs> <laughs> well, do monetize. Yeah. With All that right. being said, yeah. yeah. Do you have anything that you'd like to plug though? Um. Uh. Yeah. So my um my uh my new mini album's out. Um. It's called Limbo. It has three songs. Uh. I worked a lot. Uh, I worked really hard they, on it. Where can they listen and where can they get it? You can get it. Like you can listen, stream it on Spotify. It's on iTunes and everything. You can just search June Limbo. It's on my channel at June Korean on YouTube. My music video's out. My music video for my third song is coming out uh, pretty soon too. And yeah. Awesome. That's pretty much it. Well, yeah. make sure you guys go check it out. It's actually very legit, especially if you like BGA stuff. It's it's up there, man. The quality is really good. Um, that being said, make sure you guys follow us at off the pill on Twitter at off the pill podcast on Instagram and, yeah. um, June, you're, well, we, we can pop up your thing. Yeah. Right? yeah. June curry on curry on for I, curry. I have been doing it. Yeah. June yeah. curry in. Um, yeah. With that being said, I guess we'll just, you know how we outro this. We'll just breathe into the mic in three, two, one. <sighs> <laughs> Do you know that mic probably smells like, like so many different people? So like, like curry, I cleaned it. He cleans like it curry every on, time. he cleans it every it time. It's like said. curry on, curry on, <laughs> curry on. yeah, crayons, crayons, crayons. <laughs> <laughs>